Uh, today in the shop, we worked on Luciano's ZX7R fuel tank. We're halfway through painting it right now. Today we had to lay out the trim and paint the white. The final step we'll do in the next session of painting the green and maybe even the clear. I don't know. But we have hit a, a really nice little patch of weather here in the middle of a freezing cold snowy winter. So I'm every time I get a day that I can paint, I either work on my wheel or Luciano's project. And they're both coming along great. The wheel is actually drying and clear today up by a heating vent. So I'll have two or three days to work on this and maybe get this one drying up by a heating vent soon. Now today looks like we're going to have a good painting day and I'm going to try to get some work done on Luciano's ZX7R tank, among other things. It's time to bring the wheel into the cellar, put it under a heating vent for two or three days before we buff it out and install it. But it looks like we've got a good painting day and I really don't want to waste any day like this because you never know when they're going to end. And you wake up in the morning and it's uh, you got a week of no painting day. So we'll, we'll make this a productive day. And as I'm looking at the wheel, I just couldn't be happier the way that worked out, especially the color. The color is exactly what I had in mind. But it's time to get this down in the cellar. It's been out here, it's been out here overnight. And it won't be long and we'll have the both wheels on. And we can then do a photo shoot and then move on to the next couple of little things that we're going to do on this bike. I already got the material made and I don't want to, of course, let the cat out of the bag keep the suspense going because I don't know if this stuff you never know when I'm going to run out of projects you know but but it never seems that I do I always seem to have something new and that's the bottom line when you have a bunch of old bikes in your humble collection there's always something to polish there's always something rusting there's always something needs an oil change or a tire or a brake pad it never ends and that's that's what's really attractive to me it keeps you young and if you're old enough to remember when RDs were the thing that is to ride down Main Street and smoke up the world, well, hey, it's a modern world. The world has moved on, but we still have an RD. And all these bikes that I've restored, every one of them, they've been a labor of love. There's just no other way to put it. I'm not sure if you can see in the early morning sunlight here the quality to finish is just just perfect but even more important again is I got I think I got the silver right for this motorcycle and that paint should be even more durable than the paint it replaces that urethane the four to one is super durable and on a wheel sometimes you really need it you pick up stone chips or whatever we'll see as time goes by well, I put a lot of time into both of these wheels, and I wanted to see these in the bright sun, look at them from several angles. They are just sitting out there like diamonds. They are really nice, and the color is the best. So for the next three, maybe two or three days, depending on the temperature, because if it's real cold, that heating vent will cook this. But I found waiting the extra day was definitely worth it. And then this will be a little bit, I don't even know if this needs to be buffed out as I'm looking at it. It, it dried and again, using that hair dryer seems to be an asset. Seems to make it just a little bit better, but I, I don't know. But the paint now, right now, just truth and advertising, this paint is still soft. I can put my fingernail in it. But it was down in the low 20s last night and it was out in the garage all night. So the days we worked on this, we prepped the tank, we sanded the prime. Today we have to back mask off what's going to be white. This is Luciano's ZX7R tank. So this is the basically the paint job that Luciano wants to replicate, except for a change. He's going to put his own stickers on it and not use that Kawasaki word, which I don't know. I would have put the Kawasaki word, but, but you know what? It's his bike. So the original paint job that Luciano had on here, this was just painted, and he put a piece of tape up here, which of course, pfft, I'm not into that, putting tape on things. But I'm trying to look at how far above he put the stripe, I'd say a quarter of an inch above. It runs parallel to the bottom, so this will be easy, and then we'll break it in half. 
Now I've got one little spot in the paint here that I'm not happy with. Now we'll get rid of that right away. A little 2,000 grit paper there. I don't want to have the tape go over that. Okay, so there's already a little touch up here that I got to deal with, but nothing we can't live without. Now I want to make sure I get this stripe exactly the way he wants it. Yeah, it sweeps back probably to exactly. Now, here's what's going to happen is the the eighth inch tape, if I were to take quarter inch tape, it's going to bend around this severe corner. And what's going to happen, it's going to... But if I do two stripes of eighth inch, I'll minimize that possibility. So I'm looking and I'm just thinking, I wonder if he... Yeah, I guess we could do that. I'm not sure. Let's find out. I'm trying to figure out how I want to lay this out the easy way here. The idea is not to get any butt joints, any joints where the two colors join. You like to have a stripe in between. So let's see if we can lay this out real nice. This is the kind of thing that looks real easy until you go to do it. Now we want, but we'll get it right. Now this is just going to set the stripe. Yeah, I guess that's okay. Now I'm looking at the drawing, that's not how, there's no sweep in it. He did this, he went right down. Okay, so, see that's why I have a drawing. I want to make sure. Because the customer is always right. Especially if he's Luciano. So let's try again. Let's, and don't be afraid, t tape, tape is relatively cheap to what the rest of this job is going to cost. And it looks like this is what he did. I'm going off the drawing. Okay, whatever it is, that's what it, that's the way he apparently wants it. Okay, so all that did was just set this up. So I'm roughly where I want to start with this. So the next thing I want to do is just get this down in here and butt join these two tapes and get this nice and nice and neat and even. Because this will be the quarter inch stripe. And it's definitely easier to do this with two pieces of eighth inch tape and then put another eighth inch piece over the seam when the curve is severe. Especially if you're using the, the vinyl tape, sometimes it doesn't really want to really want to stick and bend the way you think it should. Okay, so this is going to come down here. This is going to come down here. And what this is going to be is we're going to back mask off all of the areas that are going to be white. Okay, so that's that's looking pretty much like what we have. Now pretty much what I'm going to try to do is do the same thing on the, this side. And many of the paint jobs I've worked on for Vlad when he brought me the pictures, they were pretty complicated. So this is not that complicated, but I want to get it as close as I can. Now what I'm doing is just making a pattern so that I know this angle. This will be relatively straightforward. I know this angle here. Now you'd never really see this because you can't see both sides of the motorcycle at the same time but it only takes a minute more to get it that it is symmetrical. Okay, that pretty much that pretty much captures the angle we want and it'll be this end that faces the tape and this end is the bottom so now I have to reverse this with the bottom on the bottom yeah that's pretty accurate that's pretty good okay so we know we're close now I can put the second piece of tape on and then what happens is and let me just do this once I get this piece of tape on, then I just have to connect it in the back and make sure that from every way you look at it, it's symmetrical. Again, this, this sounds real easy, but uh, well, it's easy if I did this more often, but I don't do it that often anymore. When I used to build models and do this up pretty much on a regular basis, it was easier. Okay, so we're going to go around here. And then we have to put a tape over the joint in the middle. 
And that then becomes the stripe. Then we have to lay out the break point where these two colors, where they join. If it was your lucky day and you could do this with, uh, <laughs> with quarter inch tape, but it's just easier to do it this way. So what's going to happen is the white is going to be on this side. We're going to back mask here. And then, oh, the white will be in the middle, I think. Yeah, the, white, the white's in the middle. Then when we take that back masking off, this will stay on. This never comes off, and then we'll back mask this and paint this, that Kawasaki green. So now the idea is, and by the way, these little, the little knives with the break-off tip, they're real handy for this kind of work. Now I can get this one and try to get this, make sure that I have it symmetrical, of course. And now we're looking and making sure they're both coming together at the same time. I think he even puts that, that uh, protector, that, that vinyl protector over the back, so you probably won't even see back here. But, but that whole idea of not having butt joints in the paint, where one color you pull up the tape and you have to back mask the new tape, it just makes it nicer. It definitely, definitely makes it nicer if you can, if you can incorporate that into your paintwork. And then once I get the joint over this, we can lay out the side, the side view. That's what's good if we have a picture. And of course, when you're doing paintwork, not decals, the paint can go right off the edge, which this does. If we had a sticker instead of this, it probably would have to end at some awkward spot, not quite at the edge. So paint has a lot of advantages. Now, I'm trying to work off the picture but I'll check this with a ruler when I'm done. Try to get that to go around. Now to make this look correct, I've got to move it, and again, I'm looking at the drawing, at the picture. This has to go down just a little bit, so I guess I could just put a whole new piece of tape on there. This, there's a lot of give and take on this because it's all basically in the eye of the beholder, so, okay. So we're going to lay this stripe out further down. That's the whole bottom line. We may have to move some of this around. But again, this, this is, uh, well, it, the reality is it just takes time. Now I'm going to lay this out with eighth inch. Then I can double it up on the side I want to add to. So if I do this, now before I'm back mask, I want to make sure that's symmetrical and that I think we've got it really close, to be honest. I think that's going to be close. And of course, always, Referencing off of that, it's a, it looks like it's the right thickness. I think we're ready to back mask. I always want to make sure I thank the late Walt Prey, who was a custom car guru, had his own shop, a very artistic, and built model planes and custom cars. Kind of a unique guy. Walt, he gave us this technology of back masking with tin foil, and up to that point, I was back masking with magazine paper and all kinds of other stuff. This made it so much easier, so much nicer. And it's one of the things I always appreciate from people when they share little tips, little things. Bob Brookins has been real good. He's a body man. The people that share this stuff on YouTube, every one of them. And it's tips. If you try it and you don't like it, it didn't cost you a penny. But this is a good way to back mask. And needless to say, when done, you want to just look around and make sure you haven't forgotten any spots. And we'll get that white paint in the gun. Get out there while the weather, the weather is absolutely our best friend today, except the wind's blowing. Okay, we're all back masked up. We need to mix up the white. Luciano provided the white, so I assume it's got thinner in it. If it doesn't, we'll thin it out and get this sprayed right now. Weather's perfect. And I have gone through winters where there haven't been this many nice days to paint and as much bad weather. We've had them both. Anyway, wiping this all down for the final time, make sure there's no fingerprints on it, and we are ready to paint. So because we have a label on every can, it looks like this year has been thin, and I think we're going to be ready to paint. Boy, did it turn out to be a spectacular day. Holy moly. Unbelievable. But any of these colors, if you haven't used them in a while, you really have to stir up the pigment. And when I first started spraying, I realized the paint needed a little extra thinner. This, the temperature was a lot colder than I thought it was. And I've been underestimating how cold it's been. 
I, I guess I'm getting used to it. But anyway, a little bit of thinner just made the paint flow out so much better. So on a day like today when the paint, you can see how much better it's flowing out here. On a day like today when it's really cold and the wind is blowing, sometimes you have to make adjustments. And it, the old standby mix of 50-50, you know, that's great if, you, if you're under shop controlled conditions and stuff. But when you're working where the temperature changes on a regular basis, you got you to gotta freewheel a little bit here. Anyway, all the temperature I use on these paints, all of them, mid-temp. And I always explain to people the reason for mid-temp, it gives you enough dry time and enough bond. If you use the primer thinner, you, sometimes you don't get a bond. And whenever you're painting white over any dark color, and especially black, good luck. This is this is always, uh, well, one of the trade-offs we had to make to get the, that we didn't have a butt joint in the paint lines. And this, the way it all worked out, I think in the end, it's just going to be just perfect. But all along the way here, in this cold temperature, thinning the paint a little bit helped. And I've got to get a lot of thin coats. A lot of thin coats is the answer. All right, I think what we got to do is one more coat of white. Make it white, white. Yeah, that's going to be fine. You know, remember, we're going over black. But the whole idea of going over black is I don't want to have that stripe to have a butt joint on it. That, I think in the end, that's going to be worth it. Now, white is exactly the opposite of silver. White shows no mistakes at all. Silver shows every mistake, silver and black. So if you, if you have something that the body works not great on, white is your answer. While that white is drying, I think I'll have a uh, nice warm cup of coffee. Come out here and get, you know, even if it eats four coats, I want it to be white, white. And it's a beautiful day for painting, but it is definitely cold out here. It's not summer yet. I see muffins in the oven as my coffee is brewing. What, what are they, special muffins? <laughs> okay, guys, it's time for coffee. Time for coffee. Yes, I know you love me. Well, because of our house guests here at the bed and breakfast, we've been drinking a, this hazelnut coffee by the, by the bag. It's great coffee. You give them out they there. love me. Are you kidding? Here at the bed and breakfast? I saw my mom putting out. You guys were putting out. It's amazing what a, a fresh cup of coffee and three muffins will do to get you motivated. Anyway, I am motivated. I'm waiting for that to finish drying. I like to give it a half an hour and I'm going to give it another coat. I want that white to be super white. And one of the things I've been thinking about was uh, a modifying, I have a spare windshield for the bike for the MT-09. I had a modification I was thinking about and some custom painting, but that for another video. Anyway, we are, see, a complicated paint job like this, if you don't back mask it off correctly, or even like the old helmet here, and by the way, that is a real, that is a real authentic Bell Star, not a, not a rip-off one. But anyway, that you got to think this through or else you make yourself a world of hurt. And after sitting under that heating vent, oh man, that wheel is just floating my boat. Now I've painted my whole life and never had a spray booth, never had a garage that you could paint in or a room or anywhere where I wasn't subject to the weather 100%. So I've geared the, my whole life around the idea and I'm going to paint in my, either outside here or at my other house. And it, it's just normal for me to always be aware of the weather and be aware of constantly adjusting the paint. Adding a little thinner in cold weather is good as just as an example and always in cold weather painting a lot of thin light coats because what happens the paint takes longer to dry. So what happens if you put on the same amount of paint when it's 80 degrees in one coat and I put it on when it's 35 degrees, well, mine is going to have runs or it's going to have other problems that when you could be in a 70 degree plus environment, then you have the opposite problem. The paint starts to dry too quickly and then you're stuck with not getting a good bond. So you really, it, it's a constant thing of making adjustments. And I think I've been good about sharing the information I've learned. And the reason I've learned it is I've been subject to this for my whole life. I've never had a paint booth in my whole life in 60 years. 
Well, I put extra, extra white on there. We had plenty of paint left over from... This was the original paint from Luciano's 400 that we did the Kenny Roberts paint job on, so... I didn't want that not to be white, white, because now when we put the next step is going to be to put the Kawasaki green on there. And once that's on, I give it a day or two up by the heating vent, and then we'll clear it up just like we did with the wheel. It's going to be real nice. And even if you're painting with a spray can in cold weather, no matter what, thin light coats are always better. And it just takes more time, but in the end, the result is always better. So the bed and breakfast goes on, the coffee is great, the muffins are even better. Luciano's paint is drying. I took a picture with my phone and sent it to him, so yeah, I'm sure he's sitting on pins and needles right now. He, this bike is really a keeper. I have ridden this bike. I'm so glad he's spending the extra time to, to make these upgrades and things, we're, and we're always happy to do a, a favor for a friend. Anyway. That's all we're going to get done today. This has got to dry overnight. We'll leave it out here, bring it in by a heating vent tomorrow. If it's an appropriate day, we'll get the green done. Because we do want the wheel, I want it under the heating vent, at least two days and maybe even a third day. Then I want to decide. I'm not sure I have to buff a lot of it out. That paint came out great. But then every, I say that every time, and then at the end I always buff it out. So I guess I lie a lot is the problem. But anyway, but the reality is... The, with the weather, the snow on the road, and the salt, mm, riding is really a rare thing this time of year. But painting, I think that's going to be really, really nice. And it's this tank I know has is really clean inside. It's like a brand new tank. So this will be a nice upgrade for his bike. When I back mask this, I'm going to back mask the black and the white, paint the green. Yeah, uh, that, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to designing my own paint jobs. They don't have to match anything. Uh, and we're one day away from doing the green, and then two days away from shooting the clear, and then Luciano can come and put his decals on. He's convinced he's, he wants them in some special spot. It's up to him. It's his bike. So we've been really lucky about getting that wheel done and about getting Luciano's project moving along. But one of the things, see, I'm always working on a project where something's drying. When While it's drying, I'm working on something else. And I'm also, at the same time, these two things are happening. I'm thinking about my next project. One of them is, and I had thought about this windshield for a lot of, a long time now, how I wanted to paint it, change it, grind it, move it, and I have a couple ideas. I'm not sure any of them are going to work out. And what I did, I took down the old carbon fiber windshield I made for the FZR and tried to see if I could cut a piece like this out. Mm -hmm. I'm still, I don't even want to put it on video yet until I figure out what I want to do, but... I do have some ideas that maybe will be worth it because what I want to do with, and it's where I'm going with the MT-09, I want to have evil twin parts that at some point in time I can switch parts very conveniently like I do on all the bikes, like the West Cooley bike, and make a whole new bike because what will happen after riding this for another season, and I'll have 20,000 miles by next year, what will happen? I'll want to feel like I uh, have a new bike. These parts will help. Hey. I'm so happy the way the weather played out the last couple of days. We have really taken advantages. This is like a very unusual this time of year to have two or sometimes three days in a row with a combination of sunshine. The wind was blowing today, but mm, didn't stop us from pain. It just slowed us down. So by day's end, we had made some really good progress. I really feel good about the way this is coming out. I, I know being patient always pays the wheel the patience paid on that wheel big time. That was the jackpot. And having that in the next couple days, being able to get some upgrades done on this. Now, I know Luciano had some crash damage he repaired. I don't remember the exact parts that he repaired. But having a spare gas tank is always a great idea, especially if it has no rust at all. And I know, again, because I've ridden this bike, and I know Luciano has ridden it and really likes it. And it's those big air scoops in the front that make it look like an R1 with the, with the big air scoops. It's kind of a unique look when it's coming down the road and you're uh, on the gas. It's, it's a very cool bike. And it handles great. Now, uh, as I always am, I'm dreaming about spring already. Uh, you know, <laughs> I have no other way to put it that it's always in the back of my mind. Today was an exceptional day. 
it's a day probably uh, if I didn't have so many things going on here in the in the bed and breakfast and house guests, I might have taken a yard D or something out for a ride. But anyway, the way the day played out, I'm glad I got this done. We we hopefully in the near future are going to have some more days like this. We try to post up a video every day and hope you enjoy sharing them with us. And of course, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.